A while back, I ran a fun little game of Mage the Ascension. Mage, for those of you who don't know, is all about magic users living in secret in the modern world. It primarily focuses on two warring factions of mages, the Council of Nine Mystic Traditions, who fight to keep magic alive, and the Technocratic Union, who take a more scientific approach to their magic. Although recent additions have brought the so-called Ascension War to an end and formed an uneasy peace between the two factions. Our party were members of the Council in the American South. They were investigating a cargo ship, whose crew, which included a mage of the local council, had all mysteriously vanished. The party discovered that an important piece of cargo had also gone missing. A piece of cargo suspected to be the mythical Pandora's Box. Before they could escape with this info, the party was confronted by two technocratic agents on the hunt for the box, and a fight broke out. Go! I suppose I should thank you, Reality Deviants. You've basically done all the investigating for us. And now, I'll be taking that shipping manifest. Oh yeah? You and what army? Sergeant. <laughs> we can take him! Right, guys? <sighs> Thanks, ass clowns. After the party managed to regroup, they were able to pin down two potential locations for the box. A small nightclub in downtown Atlanta, and a prestigious bank. The party decided to head to the nightclub first, because, well, it's an urban fantasy game. All the fun stuff happens at nightclubs. Hi, uh, can we speak to the owner of the club? Of course. The master has been waiting for you. Are they vampires? No. Why would you ever say that they're vampires? It's a nightclub in the world of darkness. And the bouncers called the owner Master. Ah, good evening, warlocks. I have been waiting for you. All right. No. F this. F you. F me. I'm going home. So, you are here for the box, yes? Well, it is quite the powerful magical artifact. Why should I part with it? For the sake of strangers, no less. You're a vampire. I'm a pyromancer. You put two and two together, a la carte. Or, perhaps we could do a little favor for you. Perhaps. My club has been seeing some rather unsightly figures lately. Some pests that might mean this business harm. If you can rout these beasts, I might allow you to study the box. Oh no. No, 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 no. We are not getting involved in your vampire politics. <laughs> oh, don't worry, Warlock. There are no vampire politics involved here. Only vengeance. So, the party went searching for these pests, presumably a rogue pack of vampires, and instead found a rogue pack of angry werewolves. The party barely managed to avoid a fight with them, thanks to the Time Mage rewinding time by a few seconds to warn the party of what they were actually about to get into. Armed with this knowledge, the party took a more diplomatic approach. Not another step, Warlock. I'm Silver Langley and you're in my territory. We just thought we should warn you. A couple of vampires told us to come and kill you. Which we obviously don't want to do as super non-corrupt servants of the... The Rider? Weaver. Weaver, of course. Good old Weaver. Love the big W, man. Uh, is there any way you can help us take out the uh, vampires? Ugh. If you can use your magic to sneak us back into the club, we could take out the vampires together and take that accursed box back to the elders of our tribe for safekeeping. Uh, deal. So, the party managed to magically cloak their werewolf companion, get inside the club, and kill all the vampires. Once the vampire's leader was dead, the party rushed to the basement and found it in all of its ancient glory. Pandora's box. Right then, thank you for your help. I'm sorry that I didn't trust you with it. 
And I promise we'll be keeping this box from falling into the hands of- <laughs> Yoink! You traitors! Leave. Now. And what'll you do, weakling? Simple transmutation. Turning lead into silver's child's play for a mage. <sighs> traitorous leech! Uh, guys, we've got police surrounding the building. How are we gonna get out of here? Liz, you take the books. I'll teleport you out of here so you can take it to the car. Liz? What? No, I'm ready. I'll be sure this gets to safety. Alright, so you get in your car and start driving back to the, uh... No. I'm gonna start heading towards the werewolf's hideout. So, yeah. Liz starts walking in the complete opposite direction to give the box to the werewolves like they originally promised. As Liz gets closer and closer, she starts to notice a shape behind her. She spots a familiar man in a black suit. The technocratic shapeshifter from earlier that day. She ducks into the alleyway and begins to cloak herself in darkness when... Gotcha. As I pick up my dice and begin to roll initiative for the werewolf and the technocrat, Liz's player looks up at me and she says, I rewind time. What? What? I rewind time to before I jumped into the alleyway. Okay, I, I mean, you can do that. It's just going to take a lot of... I spend a point of willpower and a point of mana. Yeah, that'll do it. So, the moment the werewolf emerges from the shadows, Liz snaps her fingers and ends up back outside of the alleyway, the technocratic agent closing in on her. She panics and casts a luck spell, making a slight alteration to reality so that some poor rando left their keys in their car. As she goes for the car, the technocratic agent opens fire and gets a crit. All right, uh, make me a dexterity athletic. I want to rewind time again. More willpower, more mana. Do it. You rewind time again. You're outside of the alleyway. The technocratic agent is approaching you from behind. I turn to him, look him dead in the eyes, and I say, There's a werewolf in this alleyway. Nice try, Deviant. You can't fool me with your- It's clabbering time, witches! Kill her with fire! I run away as the gunfire starts! Alright, give me an athletics check to dodge. I'll spend my last point of willpower. You're at zero willpower. You've built up a ridiculous amount of paradox. And you're- Basically dissociating right now. Hey, uh, do you think we should call Liz? Make sure she got back to the Chantry safely? Nah, she'll be fine. After all of that, Liz finally managed to get to a safe place. A local police station, which was mostly empty since half the police force was investigating a shootout, and the other half was sent out to track down a massive bear that had just started rampaging through downtown. <laughs> that left her alone with the kindly old police chief and the box. So, she decided to contact the party. Hey guys, uh, I kinda got lost on my way back to the base, uh, you mind picking me up? Oh, no problem. You still have the package. Yep, right next to me. I'll be sure it doesn't leave my side until you get here. Um, excuse me, ma'am. One of our detectives would like to speak with you. Yeah, yeah, of course, officer. Hello, Miss... Liz, was it? So, Deviant, we finally meet on my terms. I'll give you this one chance to... Just take the box already. What? Really? Dude, I'm all out of mana. I'm not even sure if you're a hallucination or not. Just, just take the damn box. I don't care anymore. Oh. Oh. I mean, I appreciate it. I just thought you deviants had more of a flair for the dramatic, you know? Dude, it's the world of darkness. Why bother anymore? So, uh... Can I get you a coffee before I leave? 
Yes, please.